Amen. And I want to talk briefly this morning from the subject dealing with new realities. All right. New realities. Dealing with new realities. Can you say that with me? Dealing with new realities. Thank you so much, ushers. You may be seated. My brothers and sisters, as we look around the world in which we live, it is obvious that realities are constantly changing. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We live in a world where we are constantly dealing with new reality. Yes, yes. You find realities changing from one day to the next. All right, all right. And you find realities shifting from one moment to the next. Yeah, yeah. And we find ourselves having to deal with the duplicity of new realities. Yeah, yeah. We find ourselves dealing with new realities in our social lives. Yeah. And for some individuals, reality is what they see on TV. Yeah. We find ourselves dealing with new realities in our economic life. And when we see the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, we find ourselves dealing with new realities in our family life. When the parents are listening to the children instead of the children listening to the parents. And life's realities can get to be overwhelming. I know you say, Pastor White, you don't understand. Sometimes life just gets so cluttered and, and life gets, gets so difficult and, and the burdens get so heavy that, that life's realities can be overwhelming. And for some people, they just want to take a break from reality. Yeah, yeah. And, and so they, they construct mm -hmm. what uh, is called a fantasy. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they shape and mold their lives not in reality, right, right, but right. they distort and they construct their lives around these fantasies. And uh, people are not living any longer in reality, but they are living in their man-made fantasies. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So they play fantasy football. Yeah. Help me, somebody. Uh -huh. I ain't figured out yet how you can play fantasy uh -huh. football. football. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they watch, they watch reality TV. Yeah. And I ain't figured out yet who, whose reality that is. Oh, I wish I had somebody this morning. Yeah. What I see on reality TV ain't my reality. Sure ain't mine Amen. 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 Uh, you know, uh, everybody wants to take a break from reality. And, and, and so uh, a person asked this a little boy, said, uh, well, uh, did you, what'd you get for Christmas? He said, well, I didn't get anything for Christmas. And he said, well, why? You must have been a bad boy. He said, no, I wasn't a bad boy. He said, mama said that Santa Claus wanted to take a break. Help me today. <laughs> You'll get that one on the way home. Because see, sometimes folk want to take a break from reality. But I'm so glad that in the world in which we live, we find ourselves dealing with these new realities. God is real. Amen. You might be living in a fantasy land, but I want you to know some God is real. Even though we are de living, dealing with some realities in our family life, God is real. Yeah, yeah. Even though we're dealing with some new realities in our social life, God is real. 
even though we're living with some new realities in our economy, God is real. And even though that we are constantly dealing and consistently trying to deal with new realities in this life, I want you to know God is real. And he says, because I'm real, I do what I want to do. And behold, I make all things new. John is writing to the church from a prison cell in Patmos. Amen. John is writing to people who are struggling with the duplicity of old realities and new realities. Yeah. All right. All right. They were struggling with the old things and, and they are looking in anticipation toward the new things. Yeah. They are struggling with the, the old realities and they're looking forward to the new realities yeah. in their future. Yeah. See, John lived during a time where there was global domination by the Roman Empire. Yeah. And, and, and I want to tell you something, that that word domination is a very uh, instructive word because it means to take complete control yeah, yeah, yeah. of your life. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to know something that Satan is trying to dominate yes, he our lives. Yes, He's he he, he not just trying to influence us. He wants to dominate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible said that he comes to steal, yeah. kill, yeah. and destroy. Yeah. So at this time... John lived during the time where Satan was running roughshod yeah. over the people of God. Yeah. And they were struggling with their faith because the Lord Jesus had not yet returned to deliver them from the oppressive hand of the Romans. Yeah. So God sends a message through the pen of John. Yeah. Right. He said, I'm going to make all things new. Now, I know we all like new stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Everybody in here likes new things, Amen. especially during this holiday season. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and if you've ever got a white elephant gift, you know that it's got, uh, it's got new wrapping on the outside. Yeah, yeah. And it's got a new bow on the outside. Right. And it's got a new ribbon on the outside. It may be even wrapped in a new box, but when you open it up, the, it, the contents on the inside is not something new, but it's something old. Yeah. And what I want, you to, I want you to understand this morning, Jerusalem, is God does not give white elephant gifts. Yeah. Amen. 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 Because God says, I've got some new realities that I want you to have. Right. And we like new things. We like the way that new things smell. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. We like the way that new things look. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had more help from the women in the place. Right. Amen. Amen. We like the way, we like new cars. Amen. I, I, I got somebody. Amen. And we like new clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't rolled down your aisle oh, yet. Yeah, I'm coming your way. We like new shoes. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Yes, we like new stuff because, it, because of the way that it uh, uh, fills our oscillatory system. Amen. That's our nose. Amen. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, the smell of new stuff, it just kind of waffles across the room. And, and, and when you get a whiff of that new stuff, when you're walking down the, the, the mall, uh, it just draws you into the department store. Because we like new things. Uh, but, but we don't like old realities. We, we like new realities. And John is dealing with uh, an re old reality. He's disillusioned because he is imprisoned on Patmos. He's disillusioned because he's incarcerated on an island. Amen. And uh, 
In this text, John describes, you might be taking notes, he, might, he describes three dimensions yeah. of reality. First, he describes physical realities. It's right there in the first verse. He says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And in order to live in this world, there are going to be some new physical realities that we're just going to have to deal with. Yeah, but here's the good news. I want you to know that God says, I'm Jehovah Jireh, and I am your provider. Yes, I'm Jehovah yes. Rapha, and I am your healer. Yes, I'm Jehovah yes. Shalom, and I am your peace. God yes. says that I am bread in a starving land. I'm water in dry places. I am a bridge over troubled waters. God says that I can be every physical reality that you need. Yes. Well, the man at the pool of Beth uh, at Bethesda, he had a physical reality yeah. that he had been dealing with for a long time. long time. And let me do a little preaching right there. I don't know what your physical reality is, but you may have been dealing with it for a long, long time. time. Yeah. And, but this man had been dealing with this physical reality for 38 years. Right. And everybody, uh, everyone, every day someone would bring him to the pool. Yeah. So he sat at the pool every day. Waiting for a new physical reality. Yeah. Now, mind you, he was also waiting for another physical event that the Jews call the troubling of the water. Where an angel came down from heaven and stirred up the water. And once this occurred, the first one to step into the water would receive a new physical reality. Because they would instantly be healed so he waited by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years for 38 years he waited for 38 years he sat by the pool until one day the master showed up oh, aren't you glad that Jesus showed up in your life Oh, aren't you glad that you didn't have to sit there and just wait for 38 years but Jesus showed up in your life and then he said, uh, he said one thing to him. He said, will thou be made whole? And, and, and the man said, well, Lord, you don't understand the situation. Because I have nobody to put me in the pool. And, and, and what God, what Jesus wanted him to understand is that I've got some new physical reality yeah. that I want to give you. See, I don't want you to be waiting on the old physical reality, yeah, yeah. but I want you to embrace this new. Somebody going to get this one out on your way home because God is saying to somebody this morning, I know I did it like this in the past, but I'm going to do a new thing in your life. I know I healed you like this the last time, but I'm going to do a new thing in your life. I know I did it like this in the old days, but now I got a new way of doing things. No, aren't you glad that we serve a God that he don't have to do it the same way Amen. every Amen. time. Amen. Jesus told him to take up his bed and walk. Yes, and, and listen, your, your reality might be that you come from a broken home. But that does not mean God can't fix your family. Your reality might be that you have had a bad relationship. But that does not mean that God cannot fix your marriage. Your reality might be that you've had a problem with drugs or alcohol. Right, but that does right. not mean that God cannot take the taste out yes, of your mouth. Yes, your reality yes. might be that things are not getting better, but they're getting worse. But, but I want you to know something, child of God. Uh, even though things may not be getting better, you don't have to get better. Help me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You might think that uh, dealing with these physical realities... That it would adversely affect you. But remember that the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So not only do you have to be prepared to deal with changing physical reality, but you also have to be ready to deal with changing mental realities. And that, that is right there in the text. All right. In verse 4, for it says, 
and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And there shall be no more pain. No more pain. For the former things yeah. are passed away. Uh-huh. God is not only saying that I will do a new thing in the physical realm, well. but he's also saying that I will do a new thing in the emotional realm. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us are dealing with some emotional baggage that God wanted to wipe away a long time ago. We are dealing with some sorrow that God wants to wipe away. We're dealing with some suffering that God wants to wipe away. We're dealing with some grief that God wants to wipe away. And that's what happened to that man at the pool. He had been dealing with this issue for a long time, but God was ready for him to experience a new reality. And, uh, and, and that's what happened with the boys, the three Hebrew boys, because they had to deal with a, a new mental reality. Yeah. Are you going to pray with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I go a little deeper? Yeah. I said, not only do you have to deal with new physical reality, right. but you got to deal with new mental reality. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. see, the three Hebrew boys were down in Babylon. Yeah, and, and, and the Nebuchadnezzar told them, I've got a new reality for you. Because, see, I want you to pray to me instead of praying to Jehovah. Matter of fact, when I, pray, when I play the music, Brother Andre, I want you to bow down and worship me. And, and the three Hebrew boys say, oh, uh, King, you got it twisted. Because I don't know what they told you about me. Uh, that's, my, that's my black English vernacular sneaking out. Amen. But he said, uh, they told him, they said, no, no, we will not bow down. And he said, well, I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace. And they said, King, we know you got to do what you got to do, but we're not going to bow down. So they throw them in the fiery furnace, but they said, even if God doesn't deliver us, we know he's still able. And that's the new mental reality that we're going to have to embrace today. Even if God doesn't do it, I know he's able. Even if I have to deal with something in my sickness in my body, I know God is able. Even if I have to deal with trouble in my home, I know God is able. Even I have to deal with trouble with my children, I know God is able. I got problems in my body just like anybody else, God is able. I got pain of darting all through my body, but God is able. I got sorrow in my heart, but God is able. I got tears rolling down my eyes, but God is able. You see, God specializes in creating new realities. Can I go a little deeper? You see, God specializes in in creating these new realities. You see, God specializes in creating a new reality. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's a new reality. And God said that I I, I don't want it to be not not populated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make me a man. And so God went and he took the dust from the earth and he molded it into a man. And he said, I got to get a new reality because I want him to be just like me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to breathe into him the breath of life so that he can be just like me. So God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. You see, God can create new realities. But you you might be saying to me, uh, Pastor, you know, I know that we got some new physical realities and some new mental realities. But uh, what about the new spiritual reality? And as I rush on to a close, I want you to know that this text says there is a new spiritual reality. Because it says there in verse 1, and there was no more sea. 
Now the sea symbolized separation. Because John was separated from the church of God. John was separated from his family. John was separated from his loved ones. And sometimes we feel like we're separated from God. But the scripture says in this new reality. And I heard a voice uh, out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God shall be with them. What does that mean, Pastor? Uh, that means that God is going to be uh, in that new Jerusalem with us. Because the Bible says uh, that there's no need of the sun because his presence will light the city. There's no need of the moon because the glory of the Lord uh, will shine in that city. And now God began his reality with a garden, but he's going to end it with a city. And the name of that city is called New Jerusalem. Uh, now everybody likes uh, living in New Jerusalem because they live in a gated community. Yeah, yeah. They got three gates in the east yeah. and three gates in the west. Yeah. They got three gates in the north and three gates in the south. Yeah. I'll tell you this and I'm going to my seat. Uh, there was a story about a man that was standing outside the pearly gates and he saw an angel standing there and he heard a voice uh, uh, went way up uh, and a loud sound was made yeah. over by the east gate uh, and he saw some going in uh, and he said whose are those going in yeah. and the angel told him those are the patriarchs yeah. are you going to pray with me yes, sir. Yes, sir. then he heard another loud noise going up over by the west gate so he asked the angel who are those going in and he told him those are the prophets then he heard another noise and he saw some coming in through the south gate and he said who are they and an angel told him those are the apostles then he heard a, a great uh, thunderous noise going up uh, coming from the north gate yeah. and he saw millions upon millions going in so he asked that angel he said who are those going in and he told him those are the ones that's been washed by the blood yeah. of the lamb and that man got happy because he said I couldn't go in uh, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I couldn't go in uh, with Elijah and Nehemiah. I couldn't go in uh, with Peter, James, and John. But I can go in with those who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hey, 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 hey. I want to know something. Is there anybody here want to go with be with the Lord? Is there anybody here want to be with the Lord? Jesus said over there in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, uh, I will come again and receive you to myself. Uh, don't you want to go? Don't you want to go? Say yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes.